Hi, how's it going? My name's John Day and welcome to episode one of Ranger TV. Okay, welcome back and so first episode then of Ranger TV, we're going to come in front of the camera. Uh, what we're going to do over the next sort of few weeks to months is we're going to bring a few guys from different parts of the uh, battalion and company in different stages of career uh, to chat to you about it and their experiences and maybe give you a little bit of a hand and help uh, and guidance on how to join up uh, and how to come into the battalion itself. Uh, so from today's first episode, what we're going to talk about is basic training, tips how to get yourself through basic training and some fitness advice uh, on how to prep before you go through army selection or if you've passed that part and you're in between army selection and uh, waiting to arrive to Catry itself. So today we have Mac, Max a Landstrack here in Alpha Company, he's PTI qualified and we've got Robbie, he's also Alpha Company um, Ranger uh, and he has been through uh, Harrogate and Catrick itself just in the last two years, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so in the last two years. And Mac, you're talking about four, five, yeah, four, four five, four years. So cool. Happy days. So, Robbie, so if you can just tell the guys then uh, just a few reasons on why uh, you joined up. Uh, one, the infantry, and two, what made you go for Royal Ash? Well, well, basically, I just wanted to go for something like a change. I wanted to get away from back home, step in, say, stuck there, seeing all the same faces. And I thought I'd go for the army, it'd make me a better person, and it'd just make me better who I am in infantry, because it's the spearhead of the British army and one, another one, because most of my family have came from like UDR, then Royal Ulster Rifles, so I've always had a reason like to want to go for infantry to prove them yeah. I can do what they can do. And then like the upcoming for Emmons as well. Yeah. And the reason I picked Royal Irish was because I wanted to be like in a close tight regiment. Yeah. Because it's like uh, the bond is stronger than any other regiment that didn't really show me. And the cl close everyone is with each other is amazing. Yeah. And I agree. I yeah. And just you're touching there about obviously, and then uh, you just hit the the nail on the head there. And we do say a lot about um, the regiment, as in two Royal Irish and one Royal Irish, two Royal Irish being our reserve battalion, one Royal Irish being our sort of regular battalion, it's the family regiment and Robbie's just nailed it in the head there, he's got sort of all different family me uh, members who've been through the past regiments here. Yeah, I, I, I was sort of thought the same whereas I'm not putting it against anyone on any different branches within the military itself like but obviously when you're young and you want to join the army it's you think soldier out in the field, infantry, drawn straight away. Mm. Um, cool, so obviously yeah, you've joined was it two years ago, so yeah. you were about 17 then, just before Harrogate. So Mac then, so obviously guys kind of like joining the military, obviously they might have, um, you know, some, you know, they'll be on the fence where, can I, am I good enough or what do I need to do, da da da. Do you have sort of like this sort of mental resilience now that we teach in, in back in, in, in basic tips for people who would sort of in that sort of process now or, mm. or, or sort of thinking about it like? Yeah, so obviously like, Yourself, Robbie, you'll have had all the guys going through and girls now going through will get mental resilience training, but obviously that's when you're in. So the point of like the prior bit, so just before you, when you're applying and things might hold you back, it might take be a long process, it might be a shorter process, things might come up, forms might not be where they need to be, not your fault at all, but other things outside things affecting you. So personally, I, I got knocked back at the first hurdle. I was uh, told I couldn't join on medical grounds. So it's kind of a kick in the teeth. You think, that's it, I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm never going to get in the army. Do the process, follow the process, what they suggest. If they say go to your doctor, just follow it through. Because if it's something you really want to do, just focus on it and go towards it and keep driving to it. And you'll finally get an answer that's a yes or a no. And hopefully it's a yes and you can join up and get your process started. But it's all about having that mental ability to just go, right, so this has gone wrong. I need to fix this. These get, they've given me what I need. So now I'm going to work with it, if that makes sense to you guys. So yeah, yeah, yeah. just keep keep in mind your end goal and all the little goals in between. So, okay, I've handed in my application. I'm now going to get my uh, my med side sorted out from my GP back home. That's in, that's sorted. I've got my selection date. I'm now going to improve on my fitness to try and get forward and then progress past the fitness test on selection. And then that waiting time, obviously, depends on what you're going to join. I've heard some people waiting longer than a lot longer than others. Um, keeping yourself fit and ready, don't just like slack off and think oh, I'm in now, that's it. I've got my start date, I've got six months, I can do nothing. 
keep setting yourself goals, getting quicker run times, getting fitter, learning the tests from online videos. I'm sure there's, there's plenty of guys out there, um, YouTubers themselves, that put on videos of what the new tests look like, especially so goal set and just yeah. follow the process. So like, so we're now coming into test wise. So what, what, whenever you went for, cause mine was, I'm not even, don't know what you're talking about mine, but <laughs> whenever you uh, went for army selection, so prior to it, what sort of, what was the physical standards whenever you were doing it then? Uh, I went there when it was 15 like, but that was just the standard. Uh, the mile and a half. Uh, mile and a half. The power bag lift and the jerry cut walk. Yeah, right. yeah. So yeah, we're away from that now and you'll top mm. it now. So we've got obviously the new PEZ test and sort of new gym um, based tests. I think now looking at it as well, there's a lot of uh, sort of people looking at it going, oh, is it easier, is standards dropping? But I don't know, you're looking at it now, it's more functional strength, which yeah. probably a good thing now, because I remember when I first joined, it was just PT was uh, follow the leader, the be yeah. like this PTI who could just run for miles and not get out of breath, and it's just like follow him. And it didn't matter how your running form was or nothing, it's just get there, follow him. And obviously all these injuries and everything you start picking up whereas now i think it's a lot more train smarter yeah is what obviously the guys do but you want to i think it's i think the idea of it being harder comes from there's more to it yeah, yeah. it's not as simple as you do this this and this and then it's it it's a long it's, it's a, i say it's long it takes the pez test itself i think it takes about two hours to complete okay. off the top of my head um because of all the components to it and the re breaks that you have to complete during it yeah um the gym based test testing and what you do on selection will be basic fitness it's nothing that's going to throw anybody or be out of the water like what is this what is yeah. this they're asking me to do they're not going to ask you to run 10 miles straight off the bat or anything crazy like that yeah it's very much so just keep on so i know the army have got their fitness app that you can download yeah, and stuff yeah. like that so they've got things like that um there's, like i said before there's loads of youtubers and people that do like pre-army uh training programs uh, there's some great guys that work in harrogate at the minute pt core guys that are doing programs through like social media for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's getting, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Good. so he, he's picking people out. Um, uh, it's this tactical athlete side of things yeah, that people yeah, are no, going no, for. No, if no. you Google tackle, tactical athlete and stuff, you get a load of good stuff come up. Yeah. Uh, very base, like you say, functional fitness based around what the army does. But don't, don't get bogged down if you get confused by things like that. It's just basic fitness. So working on body weight movements, making sure your range of motion is good. Uh, making sure you can do body weight squats with good form, yeah. uh, press ups, pull ups. Make sure you're solid in functional movements without weight before you start progressing onto using weight. Um, getting good at running. So short, short sprints. I know are included in the new tests. Um, 2K run is definitely in there. So stuff like you can find online like the bleep tests, shorter runs. Yeah. Um, short, so not, not like you know, yeah, No one's gonna yeah. ask you to. We're not expecting people to go out every single day and do no, yeah. eight, eight mile runs every day and then research everything. It's just make sure you've got a basic level of fitness and you, you'll you be 100%. Yeah. Just try and stay injury free and work on basic movements I to think, start. I think that's like the main one mm. is um, stay injury free. Cause like I was, I was a, um, a search commander in ITC Catrick, so an instructor, and there's quite a few guys um, who return up the basic training and that sort of first medical or sort of the first load of weeks which are quite intense anyway well no sorry there no, won't be intense now because the, mm. the, the syllabus has changed but definitely the medical procedure is, is going to be the same and they're coming up with like the sort of uh, shin splints and that, that sort of stuff is all overuse injuries so try not do not think to yourself like i need to be superhuman fit i'm going to the infantry training center uh, just come injury free and uh, with a good mindset uh, and the PTIs, the instructors, everything there, the syllabus is there, they will bring you um, to the standard they need to be. So you do not need to be superhuman or like super athletic fit uh, to attend, injury free and a good mindset. Uh, so one on so on training then just for anyone who's younger, uh, so below 18, who, who's going to go? You're obviously going to go to AFC Harrogate. So Robbie, you've been to AFC Harrogate, yeah. you went through the whole process. Uh, just tell us a little bit about uh, Harrogate and how that played out. So I got to Harrogate when I was 16. And 1st of October 2017. When I got there, I was a bit like weary and scared. I was thinking to myself, what have I done? What have I got myself into? Like, I had like a weird feeling about it. It was like my first few PT sessions, I thought like, oh, this isn't like hard, but as it progressed, like, 
It's not like, oh, you're straight jumped in, you're not getting any help. Like, it builds you up to it, so it yeah. gets easier by the time it goes on. And the mates you make as well at such a young age, yeah. it's unbelievable. And like, hard, it's not just about like, oh, it's the army, it's hard. No, it's the educational side to it. So I went there, I found my level one Maz English or ICT, and I've left there with both all of them in level two. So that was probably the best thing that's yeah. happened for me. And it's not just as like, as well as like army skills and like, educational skills you also get like valuable life skills and like leadership mental resilience yeah and other mm. things so i know as well like because it was like a college and it was so you did you do short or long course uh i done the long course that's around five months then yeah. the short courses for ones that are going no like um corps okay yeah yeah, mm. yeah. um and then so you, you can pick up like a sport and stuff while there so like there's loads in there obviously there's yeah. standard rugby football like all that sort of, but there's like scuba diving uh, all you like sort of adventurous that. training sort of style yeah. stuff you can do all that there as well cool so you're going to do that so say for instance so you he done the f long course five months yeah so you're yeah. going to do that there and obviously that there will include like robbie was saying you'll get your education out of that there and you'll get your army basic training so it doesn't matter if you're going infantry rlc chef signals radio operator like all these vast different trades and skills throughout the whole of the army you will all get this basic training. That's basic training there in Harrogate. Mm. Uh, done in Harrogate, massive big pass off parade, and I believe like the signals and guys you need to go away do like phase two or all the different cores and stuff will go away and do their phase yeah. two. Then you'll come to Catrick uh, to do, well, sorry, you did go to Catrick to do your uh, the phase two, which pff, not sure how long it is now, but it was sort of 12 weeks long. Mm. And that was classes, just your, uh, your phase two infantry training. Uh, and you'll go up there if you go straight so if you're 18 and above you're going to infantry you'll straight to Catrick and spend the full 20 something odd weeks there uh, to do and that your basic training will be included there and your phase two so you have the same instructor from day one week one all the way through to the very end of the course um, whenever I was in Catrick then I was part of a company called Anzio company so I dealt with the phase two part so the Robbies coming from um, Harrogate came to us and then we give them the sort of phase two infantry training you have a small pass off parade at the very end of that and then you head off to uh, whatever regiment or, or battalion you've decided to go to um cool so we've got that stage uh, training what do you think of training um i quite enjoy training training was probably the best part of my career at the minute right from like going straight from like a civilian they getting to know like army lads and just yeah. like getting making a bond that's completely different where to back home yeah. training's probably yeah. the best thing that's happened for me yeah Mm. So it's, it's, it's weird like yeah. you, you go expecting things like I don't know you, you go by yourself and it, you, you're expecting you don't know what you're expecting I think everyone yeah. thinks things differently yeah, no, exactly. but like in a few days it's weird how long yeah. how well sorry everyone gets along instantly uh, even you, even if you don't aren't friends with them at the end of it just for that co split, split set yeah, of time yeah. of the, that course everyone's like you're, you're in it together yeah that's so that's syllabus you are in it together yeah that syllabus that's is driving that sort of teamwork yeah 100 and the way you get along now like. and it's stuff, like yeah. you're right and it's like um just go and do it so if you're like you've went through the army selection you've passed and you're now you're sort of thinking oh is that going to be too hard or or will i enjoy it just go and do it don't and one thing do not listen to any horror stories across the internet oh. or to any of your friends who have may have tried basic training and they've left it early it's nine times out of ten if they've left basic training early they just weren't they just didn't have it um you know we need a particular person to be infantry to be in the military some people just don't have it um do not listen to them horror stories it's the same with us whenever you're in past uh, training you're in battalion and you're wanting to go on a, on a different course uh, maybe someone's went on that course prior to you going and they haven't done so well or they weren't successful then their negative sort of stuff comes back to you and psychologically around well no way i can't go anywhere out there so do not listen to what anyone else is saying uh, head down and go for it yourself i think that biggest gap is obviously if you do have problems in your application say say for example you're yeah. doing there's a long time i think I think I waited six months before from applying to actually starting basic training. Mm -hmm. and like you think that's not a long time, but when you sat doing nothing, you, you you start researching things. Oh, what's the army actually like? And that's yeah. where these stories come from. People are going to do it, and you you might do it, or might have already done it. But it's like take everything with a pinch of salt. Like it's some there might be some truth in it, but there probably isn't. Just yeah. go and see for yourself. Yeah, just so go it's hundred percent. It. It's every person's different, and it'll affect everybody different, and yeah. it'll have different benefits to different people. But if you don't try it, you're never ever gonna find out. Yeah. Um I suppose then so sort of the last sort of piece of the today's episode one is what we'll finish on is us, as in the Royal Irish, um mm. Rangers. So 
obviously that there sort of whole training piece is, is like Catrick a Harrogate, Harrogate obviously for everyone in the military, uh, Catrick infantry. Uh, so you pass that, you'll come, if you are coming to us, you'll come to us. And then you'll come to a Ranger Carter. So, you know, there's also obviously different sort of speculation in this and what, you know, what's this and what's that. All it is, is a thing called phase three training. So you're going to come to us uh, and we're going to work on your fitness again. So I, I think we're looking at four weeks now, um, three weeks, Ranger Carter, then the last week will be like a Ranger week, um, which has been new to come in in 2020. But your first three weeks, all it is, it's going to be working, advancing on the fitness that you've retained in Catrick. So they'll get you to a good standard, and all it is, it's going to tweak that bit up. You're going to do navigation, you're going to do med training, you're going to do your signals course, what's that? What's that? Um, BRU. BRU, yeah, so your basic radio users course. Uh, and then if you've already got your B license, which I believe you'll get at the end of Catrick anyway, if you don't have it when you start Catrick. So if you come to us with B, then you will start to do C license because the, the vehicle platform we mainly use in battalion is obviously the Foxhound and you need a C license uh, to drive that. Mm -hmm. uh, so all that's going to be crammed in the four weeks. So that means then uh, once you're finished and you go off to whatever company or um, platoon you're going to go to, that we know then you're good ranger standard. Uh, it's nothing that's not achievable. It's just going to tighten you in and hone them, them skills uh, as a ranger. Obviously you haven't, obviously because we're we're away somewhere in a minute, but uh, you, cause that's the, you haven't got one done yet, but uh, you're gonna be doing it. Um, the start of the new year, 2020, mm -hmm. we're all back and stuff. That is it for episode one. Um, thanks very much for listening. Um, stand by for, I think either next week or the week after, uh, we're gonna go for episode two. We'll give a couple more guys down um, from the regiment and talk a bit more about the sort of specialist roles that you may uh, want to go or aim towards within the regiment itself. So your ranger first and the rifle companies and then obviously you've got all these other different sort of specialist trades and, and sort of jobs within the battalion. So thanks very much. See you in episode two.